Welcome to History Nuts. I'm Russ Carson Jr., the founder of Family Tree Nuts. At Family Tree Nuts, we build family trees for people and we produce videos at historic locations and videos that help to honor your ancestors. I'm Jameson Cable, founder of the Kentucky History Podcast, where we talk about anything Kentucky history, events, people, if it has to do with Kentucky, we're going to discuss it. And we've teamed up together to bring you History Nuts. History Nuts is a live show where we talk about, you guessed it, history. Right. History seems to be less and less to people today, but we are trying to do everything we can to keep it alive. Absolutely. History is a passion of ours for sure, but it connects to you. For us, tell us about the best part of the show. You can join in. You can comment and ask questions live. We've got a great topic today, and we know you're going to enjoy this episode of History Nuts. We are live. We are live. What's up, my buddy? <laughs> We're live, man. Running in hot, right? Did you make Running the dig? Hot. You got What'd to you serve? Say? I said, huh? you make the dig? Got to serve? Oh, yeah, I'm beating feet from a volleyball game. My uh, daughter's a coach now. And she was a heck of a player, played in college, and this is her first year coaching. So that's what I've been doing. I beat feet here. But I'm very prepared for this. Well, good, very good. Prepared. Yes, you have a – you know about George Madison a bunch. I mean, Madison County, right, all that stuff. Yeah. But, the, you know, the thing about it is, you know, we're, we're going to talk about this fellow tonight, uh, George Madison. And – you know, he's a guy that uh, I'm willing to say that most folks that are watching this, unless they looked it up because they saw that's who we were going to talk about, do not know about this guy. Oh, yeah. He definitely flies under the radar. I mean, big really. time. You know, yeah. and, we, and, and, and it's one of those guys that uh, he has a heck of a story. He has a story that's bigger than a lot of the people that uh, are the big names that people know in history. Uh -huh. So yeah. it's crazy that uh, people don't know about him. I think, matter of fact, I think tomorrow I'm going to go visit his grave. I, I you know, where he's mm -hmm. buried at and stuff. So yeah. uh, it's, it's, you know, quite, quite an interesting fella. So very much I so. Guess we should get the preliminaries out of the way, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so um, comment, let us know where you're watching from. Like the camera or like, like the camera, like, subscribe to the YouTube channels. Um, and is that about it? Uh, yeah, subscribe to you. I want to say this too. If you know, a lot of people think they have to see this show live because it's a live show, but uh, they, you know, you can watch this, I don't know, seven years from now, kind yeah. of thing. You know, it's out there. So the advantage of being live is that you can comment and stuff. So, yeah, make sure you comment. Let us know where you're watching from. I see Gail says hello, Patty's saying hello from Indiana, Chris. Our dedicated guy out there in Camarillo, California. We're gonna have to do some stuff with you, Chris, uh, about California out there. But, but uh, are you a California fan, Jameson? Well, I mean, I've never been, so I can't really. You know, I've never I, been. I lived I mean, there for a year in the middle of the uh, daggone desert, man. Oh man! You know, I've been married. Uh, I've been married a quarter century, and my wife said that year we lived out there in the desert. <laughs> I almost left you. And I'm like, whoa! California <laughs> 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 sucks, man. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry about that, Chris. But uh, ancestor stalker says hello from uh, Illinois. Melissa from Indiana. Lynn mm -hmm. from Missouri. Jason okay. says hello from Gettysburg. Yeah, we've got them all over the place. Yeah, uh, we've, got, we've got a guy that's getting ready to start shooting some videos from Family Tree Nuts that was at Gettysburg uh, yesterday. Uh, cool. Scott. Cool. Hey, one question, though, before we get into it too much. Uh, I did want to shout out the UK football team, 2-0, 2-0. <laughs> and right? Big Blue Nation. Now, yeah, they got a pretty good squad. I mean, they won by seven, but it looked like they – it felt like they won by three or four mm -hmm. touchdowns, didn't it? Yeah, so. yeah. So – you know, yeah. Any other, any other yeah football, one, like, <laughs> is, that, is that the end? Of, is that the rest of the story? That, that, that was my end game. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, today I talked to the coach of Wisconsin. We're headed up for a uh, official visit up in oh, Wisconsin. Oh, cool. cool. Well, that's that's awesome. schedule. You should see yeah. the itinerary. So, anyway, we better get anyway, stick back. Get, to get, yeah, yeah. Here. We'll be here for an hour or two. <laughs> <laughs> Michael says hello from my computer. 
So, oh. uh, and Robbie's <laughs> watching in Central Kentucky. Hey, buddy, me too. So mm -hmm. uh, now, and I'll, I'll, I'll says, go ahead. Well, Patty says the hello from Indiana, and she did not research prior to this all right. time. All, right. all, all fresh. Um, so George Madison, I will be, I will correct myself. Madison County, Kentucky, is not named after George Madison. It is named after James Madison. Who's James Madison? Uh, he's kind of a big, big, important guy. You, you, you know, you know, yeah, well, he's he's George Madison's cousin. Yeah, he's kind of, he sure he's kind of big up there. So we'll get President into that. James, President James mm -hmm, Madison, mm -hmm. yeah. and, and that's not you know it's funny because George Madison is such a guy that is so unknown. During the the conversation between you and I, how many times did we bring up we said James instead of George? You know, I mean, yeah, yeah. We're talking about James yeah. Madison. No, we're not. We're talking about <laughs> George. George. George Madison. Oh, cuz. Yeah, oh, cuz. Yeah, second cousin of, of James. George Madison, yeah. you know, when was he born? When and where was he born? Who is this guy? So he was born in Virginia, right? Georgia boy born in Virginia, 1763. Yeah, Augusta County, which is now Rock Bridge County. Yeah. Are you there? Uh, I'm here. I had an interruption. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they're in Rockbridge County, and then uh, that's not uh, Rockbridge from uh, Blazing Saddles, if you know about that, but uh, there's a peaceful town called Rockbridge, but uh, Rock, <laughs> Rockbridge County, Virginia. <laughs> man, we're all over the place tonight, aren't we? Whew, we got it. We're trying, trying to yell. We've been filming all day, man. We've done some, we've done some videos today uh, uh, about the found, founding of uh, Lexington and some people there mm -hmm. and some stuff, so those are really cool. Uh, Michael Bush says, of course, that J George Madison is his fourth cousin, eight times removed. Cool. cool. We couldn't do a show if, if Michael <laughs> Bush is not. Michael, please, please make me a chart. Make me a list of who you're related to, because I'd love to have you as a guest on the show one time where we can just talk about your family tree and everybody that you're related to. So I'm related to a bunch of farmers, you know, and I'm proud of those yeah. people. But Michael Bush is related to everybody. He's got so. the pedigree. He's got the pedigree. Yeah. Now, Kentucky County names changed a lot right after the Revolutionary War. Absolutely. Uh, maybe. Oh, well, 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 who they were naming them after. Who they were naming them after. Yeah. Michael says he'll send us a zip file. But, uh, it's that uh, big. we got to have a zip big, file. Was, well, that's a big <laughs> file. Uh, so anyway, anyway, got, got our interruptions out. So he's related to a lot of people, though, like we said. And he has a lot of connections. Um. Uh, he was born in Virginia. Uh, George's brother was Bishop James Madison. Right. <laughs> to make it a little bit more confusing, who was the president? Not the president. Not the not, president. Yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa. The, the president, president of, of William and Mary College. So. Right. Yeah. The then once again, the US. <laughs> yeah, not president of the United States. President of William and Mary, which is the oldest university in the United States. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's it's in it's in Virginia. Is it in Virginia or yeah, is it in absolutely. it's in Virginia? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. I think uh, they're his, messing up the Indians. I think, but they need to change that, don't they? But, uh, <laughs> like everybody else, I guess. <laughs> right. So <laughs> another his brother. brother was a captain in the Revolutionary War. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we know, and this is what's this is what's cool about this fella because this guy had a huge life. I mean, he became the governor of Kentucky for goodness sake. But he enlist he enlisted in the revolution as a private, you know, kind of thing. He was as motivated to. He wasn't, you know. We talk about a lot of people that, you know, that were colonels, majors, generals, you know, all that kind of stuff, big time leaders. He enlists as a private. He came in at the bottom, and matter of fact, he lied about his age in order to enlist because I think he's born in what uh, 1763. 63. Yep. 1763. So he's too young to uh, uh, enlist, but he enlists anyway. So right off the bat, he's got my respect because he came in as a bottom line private yeah. and uh, served in the revolution and uh, uh, performed his duties well. But we know that like so many other people that served in the revolution, he immigrates, migrates to Kentucky. Yeah, buddy. By what? Uh, 1784. I think we know he lived yep. here. Yep, 1784, he comes to Kentucky and settles his roots. Like, so and many, so many of that. 
and we find records from uh, Lincoln County. You know anybody that lives in Lincoln County? Oh, yeah. I know quite a few. I mean, Benjamin <laughs> Logan. I mean, we could go on. We probably don't need to go through all those. But. <laughs> Amos, Amos and Cable. You know, oh, yeah, so myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really cool. That's where he moves uh, originally. And But Kentucky is just a peaceful spot during that time when he moved here, during the 1780s. It's a peaceful it's place. So, so, so peaceful. Nothing, nothing going on except for constant violence and <laughs> battle. <laughs> yeah, it was not a peaceful place. There was, I mean, there's, uh, you know, Native American attacks constantly. Um, you know, there was also the whole Brit British, British. Um, I don't mean the World of, War of 1812, um, but I mean, there's just, you know, it's basically a war with Native Americans constantly um, non -stop. settling the frontier nonstop. Non -stop, non -stop I mean, yeah. Native American attacks. Native American attacks on the individual, not like mm -hmm. huge wars and battles and mm -hmm. such. And there was some of those, you know, with the uh, siege there at, uh, you know, Fort Logan and Fort Boonesboro and, and yeah. uh, Ruddles and, 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 and on and on. But there was mainly massive Indian attacks on, I got to say Indians, man. It, it's hard mm -hmm. to say Native Americans, <laughs> hard to say in, indigenous people. I am sorry, guys. <laughs> I apologize right from the beginning, you know. I mean, I grew up, the, you know, playing playing uh, Cowboys and Indians, you know. <laughs> but uh, no disrespect to Native Americans, mm -hmm. you know, kind of thing. But mostly Shawnee attacks and yeah. driven by the British, you know, mm -hmm. kind of thing. So a lot of people will, will say that uh, this was their land and things like that. Well, we can go in great detail about the Treaty of Stanwix and how nobody lived here and whose land was it really. That is not what I want to get into here, but... Uh, constantly constantly being attacked by uh shawnee stealing their horses killing people uh individual families and stuff like that brutal brutal mm -hmm. indian attacks and uh he just kind of sits by idly and lets that happen doesn't he no man he joined the revolutionary war when he was like 14 uh <laughs> he's not <laughs> he's not sitting back into anything like that so he jumps right into it and that was one of the big things people in kentucky kind of had they had that was the biggest issue they wanted help help from virginia you know get us help send help um to kind of fend off these uh, native american attacks and eventually um that's kind of where they go they they actually get some help and you know not i, I, yeah, I mean i guess you can say a little bit not much but uh, it leads to bigger battles uh they head up uh to the northwest in indiana wait no uh no. yeah no, yeah indiana yeah yeah. Well, he joins up with the militia at this point, you know, mm -hmm. and, and uh, he's under General St. Clair. And he partakes in the worst, the worst military defeat, defeat to this day of the, of the United States military. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the worst military defeat was? Where was a, a, the Battle of... You're talking about the, the one we're about to talk about? The one that he was yeah, involved in? Yeah, ready for that, yeah. Yeah. The Battle of the Wabash, you know? Oh, yeah, the Wabash. <laughs> yeah, Saint, General St. Saint Clair raised up an army. You know, he had about, what, about, a little around 2,000 men. Yeah. And uh, I think he, you know, kind of, I forget exactly how many regulars he had. And this is a battle that statistics really matter in this because the statistics in this battle – is absolutely insane. Mm -hmm. You know, in history, we often read dates, we often read time periods, and we often read numbers, but we don't really think about that. Let me tell you, dude, this was horrible. This was a horrible time for American troops. General St. Clair started off with about 2,000 men. They did not get their proper supplies. They left from Fort Washington, uh, which was uh, or Fort Harmer, I think. They're right there in Marietta, Ohio, and they start to march to the to the to, to engage the Native Americans. And four hundred or so of the militia says, "This is not for me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to the freaking house." And they left. They abandoned them. You got General the Steve Clair, Yeah, he sent his best regiment to say, "Hey, go get those guys." Go rally him up. So now he's lost them. So now he's down to what about uh, nine hundred and twenty men, I think, Jeez. including and and then also to about another. They think anywhere from a hundred to two hundred uh, followers, like 
like uh, families and ladies that do washing and things. This matters. This matters how many of those that were there. And they meet the enemy led by Chief Blue Jacket, who is a renegade, white man Indian, and mm -hmm. also, uh, well, there's speculation that he might not have been a white guy, mm -hmm. but anyway, and uh, Chief Little Turtle. And yeah. the battle is master, a complete disaster. What happened there? Well, and well, before like, I'm pretty sure Blue Jacket, yeah, he was a. Uh, I think he was taken as a child, uh, willingly taken as a child, I, I believe. But you know, there's speculation. But we'll, we'll go there, there, there's speculation as to the the validity of that story. There's been DNA tests and stuff that's been done mm -hmm. to, to try to prove that uh, in recent times. They think maybe that some of that stuff is of legend. They think he's a Van, he's a Marmaduke Van Swearingen, and. Uh, he gave up himself willingly to save his mm -hmm. brother's life, who he later on kills 20 years later. But that's some of Alan Eckert's uh, legend of, uh, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm getting that from. But, yeah. Uh, but what about Little Turtle? I mean, is there any connection any uh, connection to who that is? I mean, I know, you know Boone was uh, – Daniel Boone uh, was Big Turtle, well, right? Well, Daniel Boone was Big Turtle. Yeah. So – who was, I mean, yeah. who was adopted son of Blackfish, but now yeah. we got Little Turtle, who's the yeah. the head chief of the Miami tribe. Yeah. So this is yeah yeah. Anyway, just me. Yeah. Just me. Hey, hey, we start getting into the Native American <laughs> tribes and the yeah. chiefs and stuff like that. It gets yeah. complicated. You need a diagram. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So but anyway, man, the, the battle was the worst battle, right, of the United States. Absolutely defeat. Saint Clair is uh, suffering from gout. General St. Clair, mm -hmm. while, while during the battle, three horses that he was on got shot from underneath of him. So he's limping around. If you know somebody with gout, he's limping around yeah. the battle. He's trying to command, you know, kind of thing. The horses keep getting shut out from him. The, the, the Native Americans allow them to allow the American troops to succeed with their bayonet charges, but then close in around them. And, and, and they, they, they kill the people with the, you know, the guys running the artillery. And it is an absolute massive, massive route. It is unbelievable the amount of casualties. We'll get into those statistics here in a minute. But mm -hmm. back to our guy here, uh, George St. Clair, he was there as well. Yeah. Well, yeah, George St. You mean George Madison? Yeah, George St. Clair. <laughs> General St. Clair, George Madison, yes. Uh, George Madison, yeah. George Madison, was, uh, he was in the thick of it. But, and and to, to think about this as well. He had St. Clair originally had about 2,000 men, but right. half of them had left, uh, or more than half, and therefore the numbers right. were against them. So it completely, completely changes the, the uh, I guess, the, the metrics of the, the battle. Yeah, you said about 920 guys, mm -hmm. but uh, then they're fighting against about 1,100 uh, Shawnee in Miami you know, that's mm -hmm. there. But. Yeah, so they, they have to retreat. I mean, they have to retreat. It. There's no other option. Uh, and soldier, a soldier by the name of William Kennan was was right. running, you know, running away, you know, being chased by by the enemy. And he saw George Madison up on a log. He's just he's sitting like, on a log, man. Yeah. He's like, "What are you doing, man? Let's go, run! They're coming! Let's they're go. coming!" And George Madison stands up and is wounded, severely wounded. And he's like, man, I ain't running nowhere. <laughs> he's bleeding all over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, McKinnon, or not McKinnon, Kennan goes, gets a horse, brings it back, and is able to help get Madison out of there. And uh, they ride off with the rest of the survivors. So big battle. When I, I was about to say big battle number one, but uh, maybe tough battle, gruesome battle number one for Madison. Yeah, you know, I mean, this is a battle. I want I want to talk about some statistics on mm -hmm. there. The casualty rate, the casualty rate. This is mean killed, captured, or wounded. Yeah. Ninety-seven point four percent. That's a lot. Ninety-seven. That's unfathomable. Yeah. It's unfathomable. I think there was uh, out of the uh, nine hundred and twenty men, there was only twenty. Four that mm -hmm. were not wounded. Twenty-four of nine hundred and twenty. Wow! Wow! 
24 out of 920. That is um, that it's is insane. not good. That's, yeah, that's it's absolutely <laughs> insane, you know, kind of thing. Um, 896 men were killed or wounded out of 920. 896. Yeah. Wow. How many how, how many Native Americans perished? Uh, how many Native Americans? Uh, 21? 21! <laughs> wow. That is uh, lopsided. Wow. This is the biggest defeat in American history. I mean, it's, this is bigger than that on Little Bighorn. This is mm -hmm. horrible. I mean, this yeah. is unbelievable carnage. Now, General, you know, this is not part of the story, but General St. Clair was brought up on charges um, and, uh, you know, kind of thing to why did this happen? And, and mm -hmm. he basically uh, was exonerated from, from his performance because he fought valiantly. He continued to try to drive the troops. He, there was no cowardice there. There was, it, was ju it just happened. But yeah. it was the end of his military career for sure. You know, kind of yeah. thing. But yeah. our man George Madison, uh, he's he's bleeding profusely. You know, but he's one of the ones that survived. Because yeah. what was? It? How many people died? Well, you're asking me math on the spot here. Um, would kill? Let's see. So if eight hundred and ninety-six were killed or wounded, yeah, um, but only two hundred and forty-nine survived. There was only what so 600, 600 and yeah, seventy-one. So him and the guy that helped him out was the, one of the 249 guys yeah. that uh, uh, survived. But, I mean, come on, man. This is insanity. I mean, to, to just survive this battle is, a, is an act of mm -hmm. providence. So. History is a strange bird because the state Teddy Roosevelt was married to Eleanor Roosevelt is true but confusing. <laughs> Teddy Roosevelt Jr., son of the president, married Eleanor, <laughs> Eleanor Butler in 1910. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, yeah, very true. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You start doing some family trees, you'll see some confusing stuff. You're like, wait a minute, <laughs> Eleanor, Eleanor, who, who uh, is this? It's a different Eleanor, well, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so pretty, pretty daunting little uh, event. And, and now, when you say it's the worst, I mean, there's no other battle that um, the United States has been in that has lost that many troops or that percentage of troops. Well, the percentage right there. I mean, percentage, you know, okay. you talk about the yeah. battle, the bit, little bighorn and stuff like that. But there were survivors that were involved in the battle, not right there and in, in under Custer, but there were survivors. It is a mm -hmm. massive defeat. I mean, it yeah. is, and, and nev never again, never again do the Native Americans have such overwhelmingly mm -hmm. um, success right there. Yeah. But every time, every time the Native Americans have success like that, they pay for it big time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They pay for it big time. So, and then just after after the battle, just a year later, he's still fighting. What what's the yeah. story with that? So a year later, so about nineteen or not that nineteen seventeen ninety two, um, he goes gets under the command of John Adair, also yeah. the super governor. Uh, I think you have a about John Adair, don't you? Well, you know, we're talking we're talking about Governor videos here towards the end. We, you know, uh, we, we we won't derail at the moment, but, but uh, he uh, goes to Fort St. Clair and um, actually gets in another big kind of battle. Uh, but it's a, it's a surprise attack by Chief yeah, Little, Fort, Little Turtle. Fort St. Clair is right there, a little bit further south of where the Battle of the Wabash was. It's a little, it's a, it's right there on the border of uh, Indiana and Ohio, right there. Yeah, um, Adair tells. Um, Tells uh, Madison to take his men, you know, flank, flank the Native Americans, but it's an unsuccessful attack, um, and he has to, um, it, or he is again wounded, again. So it's the second, second big battle, wounded. Yeah. Uh, and he, him and his men have to fall back to safety inside the fort. So another. But 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 now I mean man. he's a coward, right? He's he's just a. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he's just a, he, he, you know he. He he doesn't he doesn't perform his duties in, in uh, a, a, a wonderful manner, does he? He's a coward, isn't he? I I wouldn't see it that way. I mean, I can't, you, know, you can't help it that he was following orders. He's following orders. That's nothing cowardly about that. You can't help it is the orders did not succeed. Right. I mean, he didn't succeed there. He had he had uh, um, basically failure on his flanking maneuvers that that his yeah. men were defeated there. But but I think. Uh, 
uh, Major Adair wrote to uh, General Wilkinson. Yeah, says, hey, man, this guy's as brave as they get. You know, he yeah. deserves a promotion, right? He, he Absolutely. Deserves, you know, uh, I mean, and you, I mean, you can't blame him. I mean, goodness sakes, his, you know, his guts weren't spilling out. I was going to say his guts are spilling out in one battle. He gets wounded in another, uh, and he keeps on signing up, man. He's a trooper. Yeah. He's a good you know, soldier. I think, I think the exact thing that he wrote was he said, Madison's bravery and Condus need no comment. They are well known. There you go. Yeah. And, and, oh. and, and I think that that statement right there sums up George Madison. Uh -huh. But say he sounds like he's going to get getting pretty popular with people. I mean, if he's it's well known, his bravery yeah. needs no comment. Yeah. They are well known. I mean, yeah. I, I mean that's 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 a heck of a statement. I think that the, you know that should be something. It's not written on his uh, headstone. There's a nice story written on his headstone, but that's something that should be written, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. As we said, he, his experience is getting him kind of well known, and oh, Kentucky becomes a state in seventeen. Well, I think this is a, probably a pretty good time for us to take a quick oh. break. Take a break. Pause. Take okay. a quick break, guys. Meet us on the other side. Uh, we've got some awesome stuff that you know. Now we've we've shown you about uh, George Madison and his uh, warrior yeah, status. Prowess. His Prowess. warrior status is far from over. It's far from yep. over. But we got some great stuff to talk about when we come back. Benjamin Hardin was born February 29, 1784, in Westmoreland County, Pennsylvania. His parents were Benjamin Hardin Sr. and Sarah Hardin. The family moved to Springfield, Kentucky when Benjamin was four. He received a notable education for the time. He studied with tutors for his primary education. He studied law in Martin Hardin's office in Richmond. Martin was also his cousin. He also was taught by Felix Grundy in Bardstown. He started practicing law in 1806 in Elizabethtown. He married Elizabeth Pendleton Barber on March 31, 1807. They had six children. He moved to Bardstown in 1808 and lived there for the rest of his life. Hardin was a very successful lawyer for his time. He was a very good speaker and won many cases throughout his life. In 1839, he was paid $1,000 to work as a private prosecutor. In one case, the whole town and state saw a man by the name of Spencer as innocent of the killing of his stepson. After Hardin presented his case, the man was found guilty. When Spencer was on the gallows, he confessed to the killing. He also won a notable Supreme Court case, Green v. Biddle. Hardin also had a successful political career. He was a representative in the Kentucky House of Representatives. He served five terms in the U.S. House of Representatives. In the state, he opposed dueling and the debtor's relief laws. Nationally, he opposed the expansion of federal government powers, including the Bank of the United States. He was also the Secretary of State in Kentucky. He had a well-known feud with the current governor, William Owsley. From my understanding, Owsley didn't consult with Harding. Owsley ended up removing Hardin from office. The feud bled over into the Whig Party, which eventually ended the party's dominance in Kentucky. Hardin had a leading role in the push for a constitutional convention, and his efforts paid off in 1849. Hardin was a member and had a heavy hand in the Kentucky Constitutional Convention of 1849. His wife Elizabeth died on August 4, 1852. Hardin died the following month on September 24th. Hope you've enjoyed learning about Benjamin Hardin. During his time, he was a successful lawyer from Kentucky. He held important political offices and change the Commonwealth's political landscape. Don't forget to try out audibletrial.com slash kyhistorypod to get a free book of your choosing. Like, subscribe, and hit the notification button for more Kentucky history content. If you'd like to support the channel, check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash kyhistorypod. Find us on these social media platforms and check out the Kentucky History Podcast on these podcast platforms for more in-depth history of Kentucky. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Hey, man, there that's have it. interesting stuff, isn't it? Yeah, oh, Benjamin Hardin, man. Benjamin Hardin. Another you know, person that often overlooked.
Well, well yeah, it, it really is. And, 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 and before we delve into there, how do you find me? You've got hundreds of these videos, don't you? <laughs> Uh, about that, yeah, definitely about a, about a hundred some on the, on the YouTube channel. I think we got about a hundred and fifty now. Not all of them are specific to just one person. You know, we've made a few um, about events as well. But yeah, um, that's kind of how it goes. There's quite a bit. Uh, how do I find these people? It's a good no, question. No, no, um, how, how, does, how does everybody find these uh, videos? Oh, how I do you find the videos? I, I watch <laughs> them. I listen to them, of course. I'm a super <laughs> um, fan of uh, the Kentucky History uh, Podcast. So just go to, you know, type in YouTube, go to YouTube, type in Kentucky History Channel. Uh, the channel pops right, right up there. And then we got playlists now. Because the playlist is, if you click on the playlist, you'll get like a list of the first 16 Kentucky governors, the first uh, just Kentucky people, people in general, like uh, Benjamin Harden. And then the other end of it is uh, county names, like people that the uh, Kentucky counties that are named after certain people, you know, Marquis de Lafayette, uh, you know, uh, Benjamin Harden is not who Harden County is named after. Uh, James Harden is who's Har Harden County is named after. Isn't that wild? On and on. Yeah, you think it's going to be named after. So, yeah. And like, that's another thing. George Madison, we got a video about him on our um, governor's video list. And um, it, it got about six, the first 16 governors have a video for him from Kentucky. So, that's yeah, awesome, pretty, good, pretty good stuff. Uh, yeah, that's awesome you. for sure. You know, you're doing a really great thing over there, and yeah. I really appreciate it. But uh, before yeah. we go, before we start back to uh, George Madison, not Gloria Miller, um, she's starting to get into some politics there. But uh, she <laughs> says, uh, "An an armed man is a citizen; an unarmed man is a subject." John Adams. Well, I like I, I, don't, know, I, I don't know <laughs> what that's got to do with George Madison, but. I like it, but yeah, uh, good. <laughs> we try not to get into politics. Well, over here. well, well it's funny. I, I, I was thinking, that, and this is what I was going to say. So George Madison, man, he starts to become a popular soldier, uh, a popular military man. And what do popular military men do? They get into politics. Absolutely. <laughs> well, well, especially back then. It, it, and that's well, the yeah. story of the history thing, because not so much today, you no. know, not so much today. And uh, if you study the, uh, the history of Rome, you know, the United States uh, follows that a lot, but not so much today. But in the past, you pretty much had to be a successful military yeah. man if you were to get into politics, didn't you? Pretty much, yeah. And he was getting popular. I mean, a popular military man it was inevitable that this, would ha this is what it would happen. Um, and not so, so popular, much so popular that uh, when he got home in 1796, he got a new job. Yeah, yeah. In 1796, um, let's see, Governor Isaac Shelby appointed him the state auditor of public accounts. So, okay, off for him, right? I mean, I don't really know exactly what that means, but <laughs> well, well that, that was a stepping stone, you know, for most yeah. people who want to get a job. I'm, you know, like, you know, Richie Farmer, you know, the mm -hmm. UK basketball yeah. player, the uh, Secretary of Agriculture. We all thought he was going to be the governor until he. Got into yeah, a big scandal, a but, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but but you know it's just generally a stepping stone in in in, in state politics. But he made mm -hmm. he, he's the state auditor and he stays in that job just for about a year, doesn't he? Oh, no, no, about twenty years. Twenty, 20 years, man. Years. A long. That's a, well, he's dedicated. But we'll get to what get, got him out of that job because yeah, so he's a state auditor for twenty years. But he does more stuff. He doesn't just do just do the state auditing. Um, he, yeah, he got elected to a few things, didn't he? Yeah, so he, he gets um, uh, appointed to a few things, a trustee of the Kentucky Sem Seminar in 1800. Yeah, uh, the trustee of the Kentucky Seminary, you know. Seminary. In seminar, Frankfurt, seminary. Yeah. <laughs> um, in 1806, um, he becomes, he serves on the grand jury for the treason, the treason trial of old Aaron Burr. Man, that is a story right there. We don't want to go on tangents on that no, no, one. No. But, uh, you know, he's such a, an important fellow that uh, they put him on the jury for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, let's just, we'll, we, I can start getting into that a little bit more. Henry Clay is involved. I mean, it's a big Kentucky thing, but anyway. Dude. Well. <laughs> I mean, man, I mean, that, can you imagine the coverage on Facebook and uh, <laughs> CNN and Fox News? Oh, yeah. and, uh, oh man, right, right here, in, right here in the center of, center of Kentucky. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, actually, Melissa Smith said that he got a pretty a pretty cozy position after soldier work. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Yeah, the state auditor, you know, kind of thing. But uh, uh, Bush, yeah, uh, farmer from Clay County. Yeah. Yeah, that's him. That's the man. That's, that's the man. Uh, but anyway, uh, in 1807, he uh, is also appointed the director of the Bank of Kentucky. So, I mean, he's a job. He's lining it up, man. Lining it up. But, yeah, very, very powerful position. So I'm going to bring up the fact that remember he served as a private, a yeah. private. You know, yeah. he's not starting out as a colonel like a lot of these guys. You know, and his cousin he, was the president. I mean, come on. Right. I mean, yeah, I mean, he was well connected. I guess we should say right from the beginning. You know? But well, I'm saying, I'm, I'm saying he didn't use that as a, you know. I mean, he could have been like, hey, cuz, you know, I want to join in, give me a rank or whatever. But no, he went straight. To, he's like, I'm just joining. I'm ready to fight. Yeah, I think his highest military rank was major, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, yeah. uh, uh, Gail says the bloody breath of feuds. That's definitely something that we want to cover. That's another one. Sure. Yeah. Those are those are. We're gonna to get to those at some point. I definitely am. <laughs> those are specific to Kentucky, but yeah, we're definitely gonna to get to those. Um, so, so the War of eighteen twelve breaks out. Yeah, that's For a big the third war. Mm -hmm. Third East war, East. big war too. Big Kentucky specific war. A lot of Kentucky that's people fought movie. in this. Um, the Forgotten War, one of the Forgotten Wars. Yep, yep. Um, it's one of those between the Revolutionary War and Civil War, so it kind of goes to the side. Um, but uh, it broke out. Isaac Shelby is elected the governor again uh, because of his war. Again, he again, was the yeah. first and the fifth governor. <laughs> yeah, but he gets elected again for his war um, uh, pedigree and so forth. And that's basically they're like, hey, we want somebody who can lead us in the battle. And uh, he uh, rallies up the troops. And George Madison, no hesitation, he hops in and joins. So absolutely, and he serves. What, what, what is it? The uh, first Kentucky Rifles, I think, right? Uh, yes, and he's the second in command for the first Kentucky rifle. Um, he's, moved, he's moving up the chain of command. Yep. Moving um, up the chain of command. Hey, before I forget, make sure you check out the, the video that you and I did about Isaac Shelby because this is not a normal dude. No, what is no, he, 62, yeah. 65 or something like oh, yeah, that? I mean, he's old. And, I mean, he's, he's, <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, he, and he's, he's, yeah, it's, it's, he's pretty old. I mean, he's getting up there. Um, leading our example for sure. Yeah. Um, so he gets up and uh, goes to, um, uh, well, w one of the big battles. And I you know, did a video on this on the uh, Battle of River Raisin. Uh, he goes up and fights in in this battle. And it is brutal. I mean, we talked about the, the previous battle. This battle is brutal, specifically to Kentucky. Yeah, the Battle of Frenchtown. Um, uh, Madison has about 400 troops. Um, and and you know, they're, they're in a battle. This is a big battle. Uh, well, I, I guess it's not a big battle, per se, but... Well, it's a very I mean, important battle. Yeah, that's probably the best way to say it. Of the of the, the end result of the battle. I mean, it, yeah. this is uh, another travesty, for sure. Yeah, so uh, they're up there. They're, they're fighting against um, the British and the, na and, the na uh, well, sorry, and the Native Americans, and um, there's a... You know, uh, Madison has about 400 some troops, uh, but they are just, they're out in the open. It's kind of similar to the other other battle that just like, they're just getting, you know, not annihilated. Like the, the uh, artillery bombardments are just, un, you know, they're out in the middle of the open. Frenchtown is a very small town. There's Their, their supplies were dwindling. Uh, they didn't have a lot of supplies. Um, but anyway, a lot of things happen anyway. Uh, they lose the battle. They are surrendered. They surrender. Uh, Winchester is the uh, man in charge of the battle. He gets captured. And surrenders. Um, Gen Madison, General Winchester. Uh, yeah, General Win Winchester. Uh, now, Madison, though, he does not surrender under the condi under the initial condition. Um, yeah, they saw the flag go up, and they thought mm -hmm. that the British had surrendered, and they thought they had won the daggone battle. <laughs> but yeah. in reality, it was their own commanders. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. flag going up. Yeah. So, so Proctor, the British General Proctor says, mm -hmm. "You better surrender right now." Madison, and he, he says, goes right. No, he says no, no, no. Hold on, we will only surrender if we get um, our troops are well. Well, what what would be called? Um, uh, uh, th British their lives are, are Native Americans. Yeah, they get protections. Yeah. What does that protections. mean? Well, they weren't. Uh, they they wanted guarantees. You know that they weren't going to just be 
handed over to the Native Americans or slaughtered or anything like that. Uh, they wanted protections, right? Well, I thought the Native Americans were just hanging out, uh, defending their lands and things like that. Well, not what in this battle. <laughs> they prisoners? Oh, they're not too. Uh, they run the gallon. They kill them. They scalp them. There's a lot of stuff that happens. <laughs> Absolutely. So he says, "Hey, I'm not going to surrender unless I. You can guarantee me, Proctor." British General Proctor, that you are going to protect my men. You're going to protect my men. And he, I think he said his exact quote was, my men will sell their lives as dearly as possible. Mm -hmm. My men will sell their lives as dearly as possible. That means, dude, I am going to fight you until the very end. That is how how – we're not surrendering, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Basically, it's the ultimatum. We're going to fight or you're going to guarantee guarantee. So it's General it. Proctor, the British General Proctor says, you know, I really, it would be senseless to lose the lives of all my men here or many mm -hmm. of my men. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. We will protect your troops. Yeah. But <laughs> that is the plan. Uh, uh, Proctor didn't really have enough men, though to uh, kind of handle all these prisoners. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, there's a lot of work. He, he had as many prisoners as many out of his own. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I can afford so, all these prisoners. Yeah. So he uh, lets, uh, lets some of them go. He lets some of them go free. Uh, yeah. The, the enlisted, many of the enlisted guys, the non-commissioned officers, he says, hey, hey guys, take off. You've got to go home. You know, you've got to yeah. give me your weapon, but you can go home. He lets yep. them go. And, and those do, but Madison and the other officers were sent to Fort Malden. Is that mm -hmm. right? Malden. And uh, th then to uh, they were prisoners in Quebec as well. Uh, yeah, Malden's however, right there at, on, the, on Lake Erie. And then he sends them, you know, the rest of the officers, yeah, the prison in mm -hmm. uh, Quebec. Yeah. But there was Quebec. a lot of uh, wounded, wounded soldiers. That a were lot of wounded. I mean, and, I mean, I think the numbers, the whole battle, I mean, there was hundreds. Hundreds, and a lot of these people were from Kentucky. A lot of these were Kentucky people, um, but Absolutely. a lot of them were left over, wounded. Um, and then in the night, uh, the Native Americans came in, and uh, well, they got they. they first well, of all, they raided the the supplies well, of the <laughs> <laughs> which uh, obviously they were coming from Kentucky, yeah. so they brought plenty of <laughs> bourbon. Maybe? You know, uh, they, they had they had gunpowder. They had uh, uh, they had had rifle balls. They might have had a little bit of food, but I guarantee you that the Kentuckians had their their, their, their native drink. <laughs> <laughs> their native drink. So the Native Americans found that and got uh, hammered. Yeah. Yep, and then they ran through, you know, killed in, uh, injured. You know, it's just a massacre. I mean, they can just kill everybody that was left. A lot of the people. There was one person, uh, Bland Ballard. Uh, there may have been a few more, but Bland Ballard was one that was able to get away. Um, but most of the uh, people that were there were killed. Uh, there's about there's a nine counties of people or soldiers who died during the whole French town and, and the uh, massacre afterwards uh, in Kentucky that are named after people from the from that event. Uh, and, but it, this is something ahead. people don't know about the massacre oh, at yeah. the River Raisin. This is yeah. something that people don't want to talk about, you know, kind of thing. Rough. And and there is nobody. I'll be willing to say that that there's very, very, very few people that lived during this time period that did not have blood on their hands. Mm -hmm. Nobody's innocent of this, but this is something that's been kind of swept under the rug uh, of what happened. I mean, these were uh, um, wounded troops that had surrendered that yeah. were massacred by drunken Indians. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, Virgil McCracken, McCracken County, Meade County. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, a whole bunch of them. Simpson County. There, there's, there's not. Bland Ballard is the only one. He's got, you know, Ballard County is named after him. He's the only one who survived, uh, and he right. was, he just was able to get away before it all happened, I believe. So. And there's plenty of times that uh, the whites uh, massacred men, women, and children, you know, and, and did mm -hmm. massive atrocities. Nobody did. Like I was saying a minute ago, nobody. <laughs> Nobody's hands are clean. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And and I wish that people would understand that. Mm -hmm. You know, they talk about, uh, well, we did this and we did that and the white people did this. Nobody's hands were clean. This was a horrible time. Right. But anyway, going back to George Mason. Yep. He's a prisoner and he remains a prisoner for about a year. 
but he is eventually released with a prisoner exchange and he heads back home to Kentucky. So Yeah. Resumes his role as the auditor and things. Mm -hmm. And that statement that was that he made that uh, he said that we will sell our lives dearly as possible elevates him to <laughs> rock star status in Kentucky. Uh, his popularity. I mean, and you know, you think like Isaac Shelby was a very popular gov governor and won re-election very easily. But uh, by this time, old Madison is his popularity is out of out the roof as well. I mean, he's yeah, but it. now his health is starting to fail. All uh, those those war battles, man, are getting to him. I mean, I don't know the extent of his battle, uh, his injuries, but they're not good. They're bad. I mean, he's had, he's had rough. He's been fighting. I mean, he's been wounded. So, so he's yeah. feeling poorly and. Uh, you know, he spent a year in prison, of course, you know, and some of that had something to do with it, too. Mm -hmm. But his health was failing dramatically. So his but health was so bad that he resigns his position of state auditor after 20 yeah. years. Yes. But so, the public, the public, though, yeah. they love him. They love him. They love want him. him. They want him to run for governor. They want him to be the governor. And crazy. I mean, this is I mean, this in modern day politics, this would never happen. But. The craziness about it is that the person, cause, I mean, he, so he says, okay, I'll run for governor. But After person, everybody pressures him, right? Yeah. And he just yeah. wants to chill out <laughs> the rest of his <laughs> life. But. Yeah. Um, and James Johnson was the person who was running against him, but he was so popular that James Johnson's like, you know what? I'm backing out. I don't, I don't even want to do that. I don't want to run against him. I want him to be governor, basically, you know? Uh, How many times have you seen that? Yeah. Uh, not One, many. Two guys are running. <laughs> One guy's so popular, the other guy says, you know what, I'm out, bro. <laughs> you are so popular. There's absolutely no, I'm wasting my time to run. Yeah. Yeah. Thing. So uh, I mean, this it, guy, it was said he you know he was just the state auditor, but it is said that uh, he could have ran for any office that he wanted and mm -hmm. got it. Yeah. But uh, you know, they they forced him to run for governor. I mean, kind of. And uh, he runs and he wins. Unopposed. Mm -hmm. Unopposed. Yeah. That's Pretty probably crazy. what happened. You ran for governor, I guess. Probably. I mean, definitely Kentucky. And I mean, you know. <laughs> Everyone would just be like, I'm out. He, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. Let's give it to him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, actually, though, I, you know, Isaac Shelby, he, he did, he did uh, become the Kentucky governor unopposed. But that's the only, they're the, I believe they're the only two. I'm 99% sure they're the only two that's ever done that. Um, however, we take a sharp turn here. Um, like we said, he, he, after the election, um, he is so ill that, uh, he goes to, he actually goes home or goes to the, uh, Blue Lick Springs to recover yeah. his health. And he's too ill to even make it to Frankfurt to get sworn in. Uh, yeah. so that they get, they got to get the justice of peace there in Bourbon County, uh, to swear him in on well, September sworn 5th. In by the JOP of, of Bourbon. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Kind of threw, threw the typical stuff to the wind, uh, mainly because um, 39 days later, he dies. So 39 days. Mm -hmm. 39 yep. days. You know, I looked at that, too. You know, I looked at the date he was inaugurated and the date that he passed. Was it 40 days? Was it, was it 38? It was 39 days. You know, he had – he told the guys, look, I need to resign. My health is failing. But uh, they forced him to run for governor. Mm -hmm. He obviously had to campaign and things. And, and uh, it probably – I kind of feel bad for the guy, you know. I mean, yeah. he might have recuperated if he hadn't have, you know, had to run for governor. But he was such and, – and, and that's the theme of this guy here. Public service over yeah. and over and over again. Service to his community service to his state and service to his country. This guy, his whole entire life since before he was an adult mm -hmm. was nothing but service. And yep. that's a pretty daggone admirable trait for sure. Yep. And ain't, no, ain't too many people know about him at all. <laughs> uh, right. Unfortunately, yeah. it's as somebody that we don't know about. Yeah. Uh, so his only action though, was that he appointed Colonel Charles Todd as the secretary of state. Yeah, the Todd family. Yep, yeah, pretty, pretty popular people. Um, but yeah, married to the Lincolns, you know, Mary Todd yeah. Lincoln. So. That's it, though. I mean, he is, that's it. He was sixth, sixth governor of Kentucky, first governor of Kentucky to die in office. Um, 
and and so forth. That, that's it. Uh, and, and, you know, this is a guy that, uh, you know, I, I want to reiterate that again. I mean, you know, it's a guy that no one's ever heard of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nobody. I mean, if you're going to, I mean, if you bring up George Madison, somebody's going to correct you and say, you mean James Madison? Because ain't nobody heard of him. I mean, he's uh, unknown, unknown. I mean, in, unless you're unless you're a history fan, no one knows who this guy is. Now, what a life this guy have, has led. So I think that, that this needs to be a guy that needs to be tremendously celebrated in, in our communities. And I'm going to tell you, this video that we're making right now is probably not going to get seen very much because <laughs> not too many people are Googling. <laughs> I've never heard of that guy. Sixth governor of Kentucky. I mean, you're talking about early 1800s. Nobody cares about that. No. But it's definitely a man that uh, needs to be remembered for sure. Yep. Very. Yeah. He's, he's a patriot, man. He definitely uh, stood for what he wanted uh, and, you know, did not, did not use his pedigree for any gain. I mean, he did, did his work, did, did the work he needed to do on his own. So there you have it. You got a few comments there. Yeah. A few comments. Uh, uh, Ancestor Stalker says, as always, fellas, I appreciate the work and time you put in, Put into doing these videos. Thanks for uh, introducing so many characters and stories many of us would not learn about otherwise. I mean, that's that's about that's 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 what we're here for, right? You know. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, I, I look. You know, this is a passion for us. You know, this is a passion for us to uh, keep these folks alive. And there's yeah, plenty of things that are out there. Um, you know, documentation of 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 articles of of uh, and, and books and things like that about these people but in today's world the people are not going to read that stuff so you know you and i feel like we're doing a, a great service to our community to keep these people alive uh for all the younger generations and things like that yeah. so but uh, Re yeah. reading is reading is not a uh, you know not always the method that people enjoy or, or go you know videos and audio are, are much more popular now. So got to get the Absolutely. info out there any way we can. So Absolutely. And uh, hey, before we get out of here, I want to say that uh, we're looking to, to film a couple. We're looking to shoot a couple of videos. We're going to shoot tomorrow at, the, at Family Tree Nuts. We're shooting uh, the beginnings of Georgetown, Kentucky. Cool. And uh, um, Pluggy, the uh, Shawnee Chief Pluggy and his and Pluggy. Yeah, that's his name. <laughs> that's his name. Um, Pluggy. That's He's, uh, you know, there's a pluggy town up in Ohio, but he raided and, and invaded uh, Georgetown there, mm -hmm. modern day Georgetown. And uh, we're going to do a video about uh, uh, Reverend Elijah Craig. You know, is he cool. really the uh, founder of uh, Bourbon? And, I, and I'm hoping that before the end of the day, we're going to shoot a video at uh, uh, Captain Jack Jewett's house tomorrow. Hey, cool. Days out. But we've got, I, I don't know if you noticed, but we've, we've had about, uh, you know, four or five videos in the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. Over the yeah. next couple of weeks, you're going to see about uh, 30 new videos come out from Family Tree. So, yeah, those are in the editing process. Our live videos are out there right there today. We did uh, videos today on the, found uh, the founding of Lexington, Kentucky. So make sure you check those out. What's going on with the Kentucky History Podcast? So last week we had an episode about Johnson County, Kentucky with uh, J.R. Van Hoos. Um, and this week is the part two of that. Um, and oh, um, Sue Monday, we got a few Sue Monday episodes coming out too. And Pike County is coming up in October, I think. Uh, but yeah, got a lot of stuff coming out. Um, videos coming out as well. Uh, some more about um, Bloody Monday, which is something and, we talked about here. And, and, oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, you're all over the map, you know. <laughs> yeah. you know Sue Monday, Louisville, and he's also from uh, down there south of Bowling Green, you know, uh -huh. where he's from. And, you know, you're talking about Pike County. I mean, you're all over the place. You know? <laughs> so let us know, by the way, let us know both at uh, the Family Tree Nuts and the Kentucky History Podcast. Let us know what you'd like to see. I mean, there's a whole lot of stories. I had a, I had yeah. a, a client tell me the other day, I don't really care for these stories that everybody knows about. I want to know about the common man. Yeah. Oh, well, i tell you. Um, have you ever heard, and this is, this is um, uh, I've not got it prepared yet, but the Tobacco Wars, you know about the Tobacco Wars? Honestly, no. Oh, all right. I'll leave you there. Leave, leave you all hanging there. We'll be, we'll be talking about it soon. <laughs> Check it out, yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, well, I guess we'll head off for now. Anything else you want to say about uh, Governor? 
James. Uh, no, I, mean, I did it again. I did it again. <laughs> George, George Madison. George Muhlenberg County. Madison. Somebody's got Muhlenberg County. Yep. Um, yeah, but George, George Madison. I mean, uh, uh, a good old Kentucky boy, man. People need to know about. Absolutely. Governor and everything. So For sure. Definitely yeah. somebody that uh, needs to be remembered, without yeah. a doubt. Without a doubt. Yeah. Um, I guess we'll sign up for now. We'll see you next week, guys. And, hey, remember, family tree nuts. Let our nuts find the nuts in your family tree. At Family Tree Nuts, we make professional, historic videos all over the country and currently have videos in 25 states and even a few international. Let's face it, nobody wants to read anymore. As a matter of fact, nobody wants to even watch long videos, which is why I'm going to keep this real quick. Moving into the future, how are we going to educate the public on all the historic treasures that are found in every community? We have found the answer. Short, entertaining and to the point videos with lots of shots and views that are relevant to the subject. These videos are shared on social media and are the fastest and least expensive way to educate the community on the history of your area. We have experience working with historical organizations as well as city or county tourism departments and chamber of commerces to produce these videos for their use. Our clients are provided with copies of any video produced as well as online links to the videos that they can easily add to their websites. Let us document and produce videos of just a few or all the historic sites in your area. You will find our rates extremely affordable and well below the industry standard for media production. We are passionate about preserving and documenting as many historical sites as we can, and we would love to work with you. For more information, contact me directly at russ at familytreenuts.org or my personal phone at 859-314-1976. And remember, Family Tree Nuts, let our nuts find the nuts in your family tree.